for more on our election coverage this morning. We've been uh, getting some insight from political expert and editor of the LULAC Political Letter, David Yonkai. Thank you so much for joining us this Happy morning. Happy to be here. Thanks. We had talked previously about some of these mayoral races. These races maybe hit a little closer to home for voters. They can they probably know the candidate. They see the candidate in action. For the Wilkesbury race, that was surely the case. Uh, the winner on the Democratic side, uh, Tony George, he, you were saying before, I mean, he was taking uh, voters out on the streets to kind of show what he plans to do with fighting crime in the city. Right. I think the thread with the PC you had with uh, Gabe Campanis, jobs and crime are the big things in, mm -hmm. you know, all the cities that we have yeah. in northeastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, Tony George's campaign was all about law and order. He basically has said that he will, in the first year of his administration, take care of crime, and then the rest of it will take care of itself. So you're going to see something um, that I think is going to be very unique in, um, in uh, Wilkesbury politics. You know, uh, the last you, you talked about Frank Sork. Frank Sork is going to be Tony George's opponent. Uh, the last time there was a Republican mayor in Wilkesbury was 1972. John Morris. It was part of the city council and county manager form of government. Then in 1975, Wilkesbury became a strong mayor city. Ultimate power to the mayor. I think when Tony George becomes mayor, he's going to have that strong mayor form of government on steroids, and that's what I think you need to watch out for with that. Hazelton, you want to talk a little bit yeah. about Hazelton? <laughs> yeah, Hazelton uh, primarily yeah. seeing Republican mayors, um, Joe Yanuzzi previous to that, right. and Mayor Barletta, now Congressman Barletta. Um, this should be pretty interesting with him now uh, being overtaken by Jeff Cusack. Cusack getting 78% of the vote here. Yeah, that was a surprise uh, to a lot of people because Yanuzzi has been around for a very long mm -hmm. time. I think Hazelton voters want a change. The interesting thing about this election, though, you have two guys right now that are currently on city council, one Republican, one Democrat, and and they are going to be like running against each other, sitting on council at the same time. And yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what the tenor of the race is going to be. I don't think it's going to be nasty at all. I think it's going to be very collegial, and that's going to be something that to watch out for too. Up in Hazleton or down in Hazleton? <laughs> all right, <laughs> David Yonkai. Geography thanks. is wrong there. <laughs> the, the nuns would not be. Happy. <laughs> they wouldn't like it. David Yonkai, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll check back one more time. Maybe hear some of your surprises for the primary election and what sure. you're looking forward to in November. This is Eyewitness News at 6.30 a.m. Good morning, Eyewitness News continues on this Wednesday, May 20th. All right, we are back with more coverage from your local election headquarters. We're uh, recapping some of this year's uh, winners and losers in the primary election race with, of course, David Yonkai. Uh, one thing we haven't gotten to yet was the, the judges, specifically Supreme uh, State Supreme Court judges. We were saying before, um, out of both sides, we only have one local candidate right. on there. That was Corey Stevens, former district attorney, former state representative, uh, common pleas judge. He was uh, on the uh, Supreme Court. He did not get the nomination uh, for uh, the uh, Republican uh, Party. Uh, the three Republicans uh, are Judy Olson, Ann Covey, and uh, Mike George. And on the Democratic side, it's Kevin Daugherty, uh, David Wecht, and Christine Donahue. And the big thing about this is its geography. Um, a lot of times with these races uh, statewide, uh, the massive population areas of Allegheny County and Montgomery County, Philadelphia, um, you know, have uh, a larger, you know, voting blocks that actually go for candidates. And it's unfortunate that, that Mr. Stevens uh, did not prevail because he's been a great judge over the years. And uh, it's uh, too bad that, um, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, get through this time. All right, want to talk about... But um, a great career. Great career. And you had, on the local level, uh, there was a little controversy with the magisterial uh, judge in the, uh, one of the districts on the Republican side, of course, with uh, Jared Kane. Uh, he did not make it. Talk a little bit about how the, uh, the so-called write-in controversy might have played in, in his campaign. Well, I'm not sure at this point in hindsight if it did play a lot because it seems like more people were going to vote for Tom Malloy because they didn't want a Kane uh, dynasty. His father was a magistrate for 30 years. Um, I think that uh, that um, write-in controversy happened at a late hour. Um, my, personally, I have to question, you know, why um, that wasn't caught by any opposing candidate before in March, you know, when, when the petitions were looked at. But the interesting thing about this race is Justin Wojcik, who did not run a very high-profile campaign, actually came in second and Kane came in third. So Tom Malloy is on his way to being the magistrate mm -hmm. in uh, the Wilkesbury area in that um, hot contest. And Kane spent a lot of money um, versus uh, the other two, but it just goes
goes to show that sometimes money doesn't always buy you uh, um, uh, um, an office. Or like the Beatles said, money can't buy you love. You know, money can't <laughs> buy right. you an office. Wonderful, David Yonkai. Thank you so much for joining us. If you missed any of his political insight, you can check it out on our website, pahomepage.com. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. For more on our election coverage, we turn this morning to political expert and editor of the LULAC Political Letter, David Yonkai. Happy Good to be morning. here. Thank you. How you doing? You're always our, our <laughs> trusty companion on these mornings after the election. We well, thank I you appreciate so much for being that. here. Thank you. We'll start this morning with the, the Pike County District Attorney's race. Well, the Pike County race, you know, a lot of people talk about whether endorsements are important or not. And the very the fact that Kelly Gahn got the endorsement of the Pennsylvania State Troopers Association and the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge, I think, 46, that speaks volumes as to why they may not have endorsed uh, the uh, Mr. Tonkin. And I'm thinking that, as he indicated in the, uh, in the piece there that you ran, uh, he may uh, be trying to get Democratic votes on that write-in, and there might be a contest, but it looks at this point that failing that on Friday, Kelly Gahn is going to be on her way to become the district attorney and prosecuting that case. Now, looking at her resume, she has been a defense attorney for um, at least like 15 years and so uh, I'm thinking yeah, I, I'd like to know what the um, what the logic of, of the voters was in terms of you know and get, getting her uh, this position you know but again when you take a look at it though if you are a defense attorney and you are um, seeing other sides of the law you know, maybe she might be a uh, superb prosecutor for the Frank case. The Frank case is a very emotional uh, case up in that area, and I think that uh, the combination of the endorsement and the fact that they had more confidence in her um, told the tale. It is interesting uh, because this race might not have been so uh, closely watched had that case not aroused. I know uh, Tonkin kind of ran on, hey, he took the lead, obviously, with um, prosecuting Freen, at least in the beginning. Right. Um, he kind of wanted to, had hoped to see that through. Yeah. Um, but but you're right about the endorsement. I mean, interesting that uh, that, that Kelly, Kelly Gong got that. Right. And did his campaign not go after the endorsement? I'd like to know, like, the mechanics of why that endorsement happened. Mm -hmm. because because I think if I'm a sitting DA, um, you know, I would do my very best to try to get that endorsement. And when, when, when the advertisement, with that little advertisement that he put out with Frayne on his advertising, did that happen before or after the endorsement? Sure. Did that? you know, torque off the people who felt that it was not a good thing for him to do. Um, it, it, either way, uh, you have a new DA, and as you said, that's certainly going to be a case that's going to be watched. Definitely. And the performance of the new DA is certainly sure. going to be a um, litmus test to see how that's going to go. I know in November we talked about how successful Governor Wolf's campaign was and how it turned so many people on, but this may be an example of how a campaign may turn some people off to a candidate as well. Could be, yeah. Uh, that could be. I. I I could understand that whether, you know, with, we mean, regarding that ad. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of yeah. people had some trouble with it that he shouldn't have been using that to promote himself. Right. And again, you know, that is something that is a, str a, str a strategy on a campaign. And sometimes strategy is more important than the actual campaign because if you come out with a bad strategy, you're going to have a bad outcome. And obviously that happened here. All right. David, thank you so much. We'll check okay. back in with you in just a little bit uh, for more on some of the races we've been following. For more on our election coverage this morning, we're turning to political expert and editor of the Ludlack Political Letter, David Yonkai. Thank you. I appreciate being called an expert so early in the morning. <laughs> That's never happened. That's right. All day long, no matter the time okay. of day. David, uh, we talked before about the Pike County District Attorney. Now we'll focus on the mayoral races. For the first time in 12 years, the city of Wilkesbury will have a new mayor. Well, for the first time in 12 years, the city of Wilkesbury will have a new mayor, but this was an open seat for the first time since 1995 uh, there was an open seat uh, when Mayor McGrady ran in, against Tom Layton in 2003 there was a contested primary so actually by Layton retiring this is like the first time since 95 that there was an open seat the, I, I'm the, this race basically I think turned on May the 4th during the debate at Wilkes College where Tor Tony George basically talked about crime and he said at that debate we're going to do a walk and talk the first time in problem properties in the city of Wilkesbury and we're going to knock on the door and say we suspect suspicious activities clean up your act the second time we go there we're going to go in with a battering ram I think when he said that 
people realized that he was not he was not only saying he was going to be tough on crime but as a former police chief he was going to actually implement it um, the interesting thing about this race is that brown only lost by 161 votes both of them were running good campaigns i think in any other election cycle without the crime i think brown would have won in a walk but Brown is Brown ran like a logical campaign. This is basically um, what I'm going to do in neighborhoods to combat crime, and crime is not a logical issue. It's a very visceral. It's a very emotional issue, and I think a lot of people voted with the fact that they wanted um, they wanted um, uh, Tony George or a lawman to try to clean up some problems in the city. A um, couple of quick points about uh, the margin, though. Uh, Brian Kelly and Darlene Duggan's Magdalinski got uh, 358 votes combined. What if those two people were in the race? Could this have been a different outcome? Sure, sure. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your insight. We really appreciate it. Okay, not a problem. All right, we're going to see you back okay. in just another half hour to talk about some more election results in the meantime. And for more on our election coverage this morning, we turn to political expert and editor of the LULAC Political Letter, David Yonkai, who is kind enough to be with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining Happy to us. be here. All right, we're talking about Lackawanna County Commissioner race. Um, you heard there that uh, the one of the winners, Patrick O'Malley, on the Democratic side, a new Democrat, called it yes. an unexpected situation that his partner, uh, J uh, Jim Wansack, did not make it. Talk a little bit about how big of a shock that is to Lackawanna County. Well, the perils of an, an open seat. Basically, uh, Corey O'Brien left to go into private business. Wansack needed a running mate. He wanted somebody to galvanize the city of Scranton. He picked Pat O'Malley. He recruited Pat O'Malley, and Pat O'Malley switched from Republican to Democrat. Uh, the issues in this campaign were landfill expansion. The uh, team of Wansack and O'Malley were pitted against um, uh, uh, Jerry Notariani. Jerry Notariani has been around for a long time. He ran for mayor in 1989. In the primary, he won that. He also has been uh, a, a leader in the Democratic Party. He basically uh, galvanized support against, um, I believe, uh, Mr. Wansack, because at some point during the Wansack um, uh, the O'Brien administration taxes were raised. They ran political ads between Wansack and O'Malley saying, you know, we developed um, a good infrastructure and we're on our way to recovery. Um, Notariani came out with an ad that said that they raised taxes and they weren't telling people. And technically they didn't because Wansack and O'Malley didn't raise taxes. But the key mistake that I think the O'Malley and Wansack team made was that they attacked Notariani in an ad calling him a liar. And whether he was a liar or not in terms, you, you, you could look at the technicalities of this, but they mentioned his name over and over and over in an attack ad. And you don't do that in terms of, you know, like get, get going against your opponent. You don't name your opponent a couple of times or more times than you should in an attack ad. It was a surprise to some people, but Jerry Notariani has been around. They're going to be up against um, Bill Jones and Lorraine Cummings on the Republican side. Um, I, it's going to be interesting to see how O'Malley and um, Notariani are going to deal with this, mainly because if you saw uh, O'Malley last night on the TV, it looked like he was doing a eulogy and he looked really sad. And I mean, you know, this is your running mate who actually recruited you. You're going and the other guy's going home. I want to see how these two guys are going to try to coexist and work together. Next couple of months should be interesting. Yes. Thanks right. so much.